with this. Justin Jefferson pulled it in. Looking for A.J. Brown. He's got it. Touchdown. In trouble, T.J. Watts. I am just, like, stoked about this Lions team. Debo Samuel. There he goes. Foot on the gas. All the way. Two MVP seasons. Not overreacting, but it might be happening. Oh, in the end zone. <laughs> Keenan Allen. There he gets him. It is Parsons. Who takes it back at the 21. I love the upside, the athleticism. To move on. He's on Robinson. He's got a hand. His first time down touchdown. Kelsey. Good night. Touchdown. Chiefs win it. All right, Super Bowl 58 is in the books, and we are here to react to the Chiefs' 25-22 victory over the San Francisco 49ers in overtime. What is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Yeah, this was uh, this was a Super Bowl that was solid for the first, or it wasn't really solid for the first kind of two and a half quarters, and then it really had a strong ending. We got an overtime Super Bowl for the first time in a little bit since the Pats beat the Falcons. And yeah, this was uh, kind of a whirlwind of emotions, thought at multiple times the Niners were going to win this game, and they did not come up um, victorious. So what's going on, Don? What's going on, Tom? Initial thoughts, opinions, reactions, what we got here? Dom, you go to first. I mean, Tom, you want, you, you picked the winner. I'll let you go first. Winners go first. I thought you were about, I thought you were going to get on some Brock Purdy defending uh, of a narrative. Not yet. But... I'll, I'll let you knock him down, and then I'll build him back up. Fair enough. Well, I'm not going to do a lot of knocking down, just more building myself up. Um, in I went back today, I believe it was September 7th, when I predicted, although the chalk pick, it was the Chiefs over the Niners in the Super Bowl. And I think you guys, Matt had the Eagles, and I think Dom, did you have the Niners to win the whole thing? Yep. Yeah. So, um, I think a quick little 10-second victory lap here. Um, I did predict it spot on. So, kind of all I have to say, I'm satisfied with myself. I, I was... Sweating a bit when the Niners lost those four in a row in like October and when the Chiefs look straight up bad, but somehow they always find a way to get it done. We hype about it. Yeah, this is crazy. This is Mahomes' third Super Bowl at 28 years old. And it's crazy, like all those times too, when Brady won three and then he didn't basically win for another decade and then um, ended up with seven. So, like, I feel like Mahomes, I mean, man, he's on great pace to, uh, to break Brady's record for seven, and he's al he's almost halfway there. Um, I, at halftime, I I was looking at the live line money line for the Chiefs because they were they were down by uh, seven, and I was like, you know, what if I just put my whole account on the Chiefs, right? Like, am I gonna bet against Mahomes here in the second half? And then I was close to doing it, but then I'm like, you know what, you know what, maybe this is Shanahan's time, and you know what, I'm kind of pissed I didn't do it. What uh, was the odds? Uh, they were plus two thirty at halftime or two twenty. Oh. Yeah, um, they were, I think, four and a half point underdogs um, still. And then it was funny. They were actually, I think, plus 260. And then when um, McLeod uh, mishandled the punt that he had to like go for, it dropped like immediately to minus 130 Chiefs money line just <laughs> off that one play. Did they score um, that drive? Yeah, right. That was yeah, the, they uh, scored. That yeah. was the MBS. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the Pacheco fumble was the. That was earlier, yeah. That was the first yeah, that, that, was the, that was the deep pass to. MVS? No, who was it? I don't remember who it was. Um, that was uh, what's his name? Wasn't it? Wasn't it Hardman? Was it Hardman? I think it was oh, Hardman. Yeah, I think it was McCall Hardman. He had three for fifty-seven, yeah. so that checks out. Dude, why wasn't he the Super Bowl MVP? Can we not give it to him? I mean, Mahomes, three for Mahomes, did, Mahomes played fantastic. Let's not act like he did. No, honestly, um, it was weird because like if the Niners won that game, I guess we can kind of go into it now. Basically, it was nobody scored in the first quarter at all. It was pretty. Um, tame throughout that. Um, then the Niners got on the board. I mean, McCaffrey fumbled to start off the game too. There was a lot of sloppiness, a lot of sloppiness, yeah. a lot of fumbles. The Chiefs lost two, three, four, five fumbles, or they they fumbled it five times. They lost uh, just one of them, which is kind of crazy. Um, and then yeah, uh, McCaffrey fumbled, and then uh, they also fumbled on a punt return. It was uh, then a little bit back and forth, and then like in overtime. I don't know, man. It was it was a weird it was a weird kind of just like second half in general. Like I thought so many times the Niners were gonna be able to put it away, and then uh, Moody gets his extra point block, so then the Chiefs were able to just tie it with a field goal. But I also feel like if the Chiefs had more than six seconds remaining, they would have won it. Like they had all the momentum to score on that drive too, and they had to settle for the field goal. But yeah, yeah and I also want to spin zone him missing the extra point. I think actually benefited the Niners because. 
the Chiefs settled for the field goal then that next yeah, drive to tie it. If they were down four and had to get the touchdown, let's just say they got it, then the Niners, um, it, I think it would have switched the game more. So I think it actually wound up working out for them. I don't think that was as big of a factor. But you mentioned all the turnovers. I, I said in the preview, like, oh, CMC, he never fumbles. They even said it on the broadcast. He had, like, three fumbles with 400 touches this year, which is, like, insane. So that, uh, I mean, they the Chiefs defense made the plays when they had to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like, uh, oh, man, it was it was weird just because I feel like at so many points I thought the Niners were going to win this game and then an overtime started and they went for it first. Would you guys have done that if you were the Niners yes. or would you have I, wanted the ball I second? I don't know. That. I because I, Romo, Romo had a good uh, a good analogy, analogy, a good point. He said that it's kind of better to go in overtime, go second because you have the extra down because you know if they score, you need to go for it on fourth down. So you get that extra play. And I feel like it's also good to know what you have to beat as long as if you're already getting the you're already getting the ball like guaranteed. But, I mean, Hanadis wanted to come out first and they scored a touchdown and put the Chiefs on their heels. Like, I mean, you wouldn't really, no one would be saying this now. It's just that the Niners got stopped and had to sell for a field goal. Yeah, I saw online a lot of people saying, because in college football, that's typically what you do. In overtime, you kind of want to go second so you know what you have to get. But I think with the way the NFL format was, let's just say they, for whatever reason, were both tied after the first possession. You then get the third possession, which is automatically sudden death. Like, I think also that sure. I think that weighs a little more. Some people are saying, oh, the Chiefs could go for two if the Niners hypothetically scored a touchdown. Okay, then just play defense. Don't just don't give up a touchdown. Don't give up a two point conversion. Like you can just um, get better at defense in that way. And then um, uh, for this game specifically, the Niners' defense was getting bullied um, uh, at the end of the fourth quarter. Like they could not go back on that field because the Chiefs would have scored a touchdown within five minutes of the overtime period. Like I think they had to start on offense just to rest that defense a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it was brutal too that like Dre Greenlaw Achilles injury just that celebrating on the, the sideline. Field. Like you that gotta be so, bad. so brutal, man. Like he's like probably so excited to play in this game, and he's like done basically at the start of it off a freak like injury. And Nothing being, you can do about it. Now he's gonna rehab all summer instead of being able to like hopefully celebrate a Lombardi Trophy. And being a Mets fan, just just knowing him taking that one step and falling down, and even like uh, Jet fans like. You can tell when a guy t- t- ruptures his Achilles. You saw it in the video. Like, you saw his whole yeah, leg just kind of shoot up. like, and, vibrate. And it was the no was contact running on the field automatically grabbed the leg. Like, you knew right away he was out for the game, which is just unfortunate. Who's your Mets comparison? Is it Edwin, Edwin Diaz? Diaz jumping, oh. takes one jump on the mound after winning and out for the season. Like, Did he, tear just, his Ach- he tore his Achilles he, or was it his was, ACL? Was it his ACL? His Achilles. No, it was his Achilles. I it was his Achilles? Right. Yeah. Um, wow. I did not think we were going to be talking about Edwin Diaz here in a Super Bowl well, reaction. Well, that's that's what the that's what the comparison was. Like yeah. when you see a player with a uh, f- just like a no contact, just a regular play go down and instantly grab a leg, you know it's bad. I feel like a good comparison too would be KD against the Raptors KD, in the yeah. 2019 Finals, yeah. where you saw that thing freaking pop out. Yeah. Um, like you so you saw it like shoot up his his calf and like you and then you saw it like get to the top and like like vibrate. It was. Ugh. Yeah, it was gross. And, like, I guess there was just so many, like, little things, like, just bouncing all over in this game. Like, Kelsey getting mad at Andy Reid when Pacheco fumbled was, like, the funniest thing. And I don't know if the people you guys were with, but, like, um, like everybody that I was, like, watching the game with was, like, did Kelsey get fat? The dude looks, like, huge in this right now. Yeah, honestly, he did kind of look big in this game. He's, he, which he's kind of always that. been – he's always been a little – He's a big dude. Side, but he's just – He, he like, moving well still at the end. He, yeah. Uh, I, in that one – I think at the end of the fourth quarter when he did he catch and turn up field, yeah. but he got to the 11, that was, he, he looked pretty quick, so – yeah, he dislocated that guy's shoulder for sure. Uh, I forgot insane. who it was on the Niners. Um, and then, like, there was the use check play at the end of the... Was that... That was an overtime, right? Where it was, like... It was definitely a catch, but I was, like, please... Because I, I was actually saying this. I was, like, you know what? Like, in the third quarter... Or, no, it was, like, the end of the fourth quarter. I was, like, you know what? We haven't really had a lot of penalties in this game. We haven't had a lot of controversies. This is actually great. And then, um, I think the... The Chiefs got a holding. McDuffie held, I think, Jawan Jennings in overtime. Yeah. He had um, the holding. Which gave them a first down. Yeah, that was that was a holding, and then Yushek's catch was definitely a catch. I'm just glad they didn't like draw anything out. There really wasn't a lot of penalties, and like because we had all that controversy last year with Juju in that hold. So I'm glad we didn't have any in this Super Bowl. I, like I didn't really care who won this game, like when it started, but I was really rooting for San Fran as they got throughout it. Not even because I like like predicted them to win. I didn't have any money on like a money line or anything in this game. 
I just really wanted to see Shanahan get a ring because I feel so bad. This guy's had too many heartbreak fashions, and like I don't know if he choked it here again, but yeah, he's at the point. Did. He's at the point where I just don't know if he's ever gonna get one. He's reached, I mean, three time, to- uh, three tries now, three uh, blown leads. Even though I mean, this lead double digit leads, and this one was so early in the game that I mean, it was ten nothing. It was ten three at halftime. Like it's not really a huge huge comeback but for the narrative it was a double digit lead so uh third one blown by him and some of the play calling at the end i just did not like um specifically coming out of the two minute warning i don't know if you guys remember but i think it was third and like four ish at the two minute warning the chiefs only had two timeouts they tried passing the ball incomplete pass so they kicked the field goal with 153 and the chiefs kept two timeouts i would have personally ran the ball there and hope uh hope mccaffrey could get four yards and either burn a timeout or burn 40 seconds. Because, I mean, McCaffrey can get four yards. Like, he was getting some chunk plays leading up in that drive. So, that was one play that turned, uh, stuck out to me that I did not like at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like maybe I doubt the phone had anything to do with it. But I just feel McCaffrey really wasn't as efficient as he had been in pretty much every other game this season. Like, I think he had, like, 16 for, like, 59 at a point, which, like, Yards per carry in the threes for McCaffrey is, like, not something you typically see. Mm -hmm. And I think in that fourth quarter, and even in overtime, like, they just started feeding him, and, like, they were getting four or five yards a a play every single time. Like, I'm like, where was that all day? But I guess you want to switch up from your game plan maybe a bit if you're trying to get creative in the Super Bowl based on their trick play they scored the first touchdown on, but still, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And he did did have a great game receiving. Like, he he led the Niners by a, a lot in yards and catches. Let's say the or the Chiefs didn't like they. I don't know. Mahomes was a pick at the end instead of McCall Hardman. Does McCaffrey get Super Bowl MVP? I I think he does based on the stats he racked up at the end. But if this game ended in the fourth quarter, it was going to Juwan Jennings one hundred. Which is crazy. I was gonna say like Juwan Jennings actually he was he was having a pretty good game. Yeah, I think uh, the fact that McCaffrey was able to add on uh, all those yards in overtime, I think that helped him. But. Mm-hmm. Like Tom said, he was somewhat inefficient for the most part. And then the fact that Jawan Jennings, Jawan Jennings and Nick Foles, the only two players with a passing touchdown and a receiving touchdown in the Super Bowl in the same game, that's just an insane combo that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it, it's funny, yeah, because he had the – when he threw the pass to McCaffrey, I think I was, like, not looking when that happened. But, like, I, I started watching it when McCaffrey caught the ball – and I didn't realize till like the next drive that Jawan Jennings threw that pass. I was like, oh, nice, nice screen pass from Purdy to McCaffrey, and it worked out. But honestly, like rewatching that play, it was gross. And like the yeah. well, one Chiefs defender, I, yeah, I forgot who was near him. Like completely misread that ball, or I think it was a bad ball that helped him because McCaffrey was able to like run in to get it and have that momentum. Because if he like threw, I think a good ball, that thing was either getting picked or he was getting tackled right away. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, I was nervous when he threw the ball. I did not think CMC was going to be able to get it or even I mean just get a few yards, and somehow he just turned it upfield for a twenty yard touchdown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean it was it was a good game for McCaffrey. I guess like offensively, like Ayuk had some nice catches, but I feel like it was all kind of the similar play design, like the kind of like um, in route up the middle. Um, and then like Debo was very quiet, and you know he got hurt. Uh, Kittle got hurt. He was very quiet in this game, um, and. Oh, you know what? I was actually looking now because I was looking at Kelsey's numbers. There was like a big bet that everybody was taking that Kelsey was going to catch every one of his targets. And I was like, oh, did that happen? He went nine for 10. What? That is brutal. He was he was eight for eight or six for, what was he? He was like seven for seven at one point, I think. And then he ended up having nine for 93, but he had 10 targets. I'm trying to remember the incomplete. It was. That was his one. Uh, was, was the interception that Mahomes threw considered a Kelsey target? Because I mean, he was No, there, it was but, a... Uh, it was an MBS target, I believe. Uh, I wasn't sure who they gave that to, but yeah, it was an MBS target. Which also, like going back to that play, like right off halftime, wide open. The, th- there was the Mahomes fumble, like or it was, I guess, more by Pacheco. They get yeah. it back. Um, they throw a ten-yard pass to Noah Gray, and then boom, immediately an interception. I'm like, okay, this is where the Niners can really gain some ground. Go up seventeen to three, and then they basically had a three and out and a and a hold or a false start penalty too. I mean, just kind of yeah. countless things. What was a horrible game? He did. He, he, he did have. Did he get three full starts? Penalties. Yeah. Or, or holding in two full starts. He was really. I don't know what was going on. Like he's supposed to be the best offensive lineman in football. And I Dude, think, wow. like the only thing with this game, like if we're looking back at all the stats and just looking back at everything, I don't know how much more 
the Niners really could have done. Like, their only really bad stretch, they had three straight three and outs where they looked awful. But even if they just gained a few yards on there and, like, not even necessarily score, they still put up 22 points on the Chiefs, who their defense was rolling the past month or so. So I feel like I don't know how much more the Niners could have done. And same thing for the Chiefs. Like, this game, it went to overtime for a reason because both teams played very well. I don't know what else the Niners really could have done to, like, push themselves over the edge and win this game. Mm -hmm. There was the, what was the, was it, I think uh, the end of the game, the Chiefs took one shot at the end zone and it was incomplete to the left side of Rasheed Rice. It was, I believe, wide open in the middle of the field um, to to get a touchdown. And that would have, like, ended the game right there. Yeah, like, going back to talking about that, I mean, like, if the Chiefs had enough time, they were going to win that game in, in regulation. Um, I was surprised they didn't maybe take a chance with six seconds left. I thought uh, you definitely could get it done in less than three or four, but I, I assume in that situation, the worst thing to ever happen would be to let the clock run out to lose the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, if like, it takes an extra second to develop, like it messes up all the timing, and then like you get a broken play, and then time's definitely expiring. Uh, Andy Reid, I feel like he knows exactly when to take the risk. And I think he's like, like I will never question anything Andy Reid does for a play call. That's just kind of what I was getting. Like, if it was Dan Campbell, he probably would have just he ran four, for somehow gotten four plays in there. And then if he had one second left, he probably would have called a play instead of kicking a field goal. But yeah, I, I'm trying to remember when it was like kind of just going back to the drives. But Shanahan kind of had a ballsy fourth down too. That was the catch yes. by I believe Kittle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he just got it by like half a yard basically. Yeah. What? Yeah. When was this? The oh. Uh... I'm trying to figure out when it was, but was it at the end I of the game? I think it was no. in the second I think quarter. that was... It was oh, it was game. earlier? I'm trying to figure out. Our, I thought that was, was the Moody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, it was not the yeah, other time. Yeah, for some reason, I just can't find it. But, yeah, that was kind of ballsy, but it worked out for him. Shout out to Kyle Yushek. He had yeah, a big was, game, too. It was the touchdown drive uh, the, in the fourth quarter for uh, Jawan Jennings. They kept That's that what it was. alive by going to Kittle. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and that, that touchdown was nice. I thought that was it for that man. I thought they were gonna win it off that. Um yeah, I don't know. Any like any like just kind of like hindsight thoughts here, like maybe stuff we should have like kept in like we should have knew going into this game or anything after this game. I mean, I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of purdy discourse for like maybe the next week or two before we get into like off season talks it's, and then it won't come back till next year. No, it's gonna be for the next seven months. Brock Purdy Really? He is going to get broken down for the next seven months, I can guarantee it. I don't know. I feel like the main topic's going to be more Mahomes-Brady for the next seven months, honestly. I think we already do that so much. It's like, we're used to it already. It's like, who cares at this point? Like, we know they're going to talk about it. It just, I feel like it just gets blown past. And be, and I mean, he's he's on perfect pace right now. Like, he is, he is the successor. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe we will get a lot of pretty discourse. But what, we got free agency in March and then the draft end of April. I guess, yeah, for the next, like, three, four weeks, what do we get? What, are, what is first take going to talk about in NFL terms? Probably, I mean, it's got to be with the Cowboys, obviously, because that's what they always do. It's going to be something about uh, can the Cowboys, like, beat the Niners next year or something like that. Yeah. The answer um, will be no. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find the uh, – the, stat for i think mahomes is now what second all-time in playoff wins uh tied with joe montana yeah i believe he's tied and brady's like double him still but yeah he's second right now okay no mahomes has 15 but he broke from the bradshaw elway payton manning tie so now he has more career playoff wins than terry bradshaw with four super bowls john elway and payton manning he's one behind joe montana so he's gonna pass that probably next year and then brady has 35 so he's third right now yeah he's third at 15 I mean, it's just crazy. This was Mahomes' sixth season as a starting quarterback, seventh season overall. He has three rings. He's gone to four Super Bowls. And if you want to get even crazier, like just some random guy, Isaiah Pacheco, two years ago, was just a random running back at Rutgers playing in the Big Ten. Then he's a seventh-round pick by the Chiefs, and he has two rings in two years. Like it's crazy. Some, like you can't imagine going from Rutgers to back to back Super Bowl champion. And if you're if you're a fan of Rutgers and you're watching this, I'm sorry, but it's just the truth. <laughs> I also yeah. saw a stat. It said it was based on opponent um playoff opponents regular season DVOA. The Chiefs are not, had the hardest playoff F ever. Like based on how dominant the, the opponents were. They, they did be I mean the Dolphins like they kind of skidded to the finish line, but end of the day like they had looked fantastic at times during the season and the bills were red hot at, at that time when they when they got them um in buffalo 
and then they beat the one seed, the Ravens, on the road, and then they beat the Niners, who are the most dominant team by far, like in the NFL, killed everybody, and they were healthy. So honestly, like this, they just knocked off the 2007 Giants, I think, because a couple of those teams were really good, obviously. What are what are your guys' thoughts on uh, what's going on in the heads of Tyreek Hill and Alex Smith? Like, what do you think the two of them are thinking? Because obviously they move on from Tyreek and they literally just went two Super Bowls as if nothing changed. And Alex Smith gets replaced by Mahomes and then they go to four Super Bowls and win three of them within six years. Like, what what do you think their mindset it has to be right now? I think Tyreek Hill is probably... Obviously, he's probably a little mad. He's like, I could have won two more rings. But he, but the Chiefs weren't going to pay him. Mm-hmm. He got paid. He got 30 mil. I think he's from Florida. He lives in Miami. And with his bestie, Tua, who apparently has the is the most accurate quarterback he's ever seen. Um, I mean, he's probably a little mad. He doesn't have a ring, another ring. But still making $120 million over four years to live in a very, um, really beautiful weather city with a good coach and everything. But Alex Smith... He probably always, always knew that he kind of wasn't like, you know, like he probably knew, like he's probably watching this game like, okay, like it's the teams I was on were good, but at the end of the day, like I don't make as much of a difference as the best quarterback to ever step on a football field. Like not you greatest, know. best, because Brady's still the greatest, but like he's probably like, okay, Mahomes is better, far better than I am. You don't think he's just sitting on the couch thinking, damn, that could be me right now? No, I don't think so. I think I think he knows that Mahomes did some, does done things for coaches that no quarterback makes possible besides Mahomes. Yeah, um, I, I agree with Tom there. Uh, so, like, looking back on the Super Bowls, too, every one that the Chiefs beat, so they beat the 2019 Chiefs, they lost to the 2020 Bucks, beat the 2022 Eagles, and then beat the 2023 Niners. Do you think the one... Super Bowl they lost against the Bucks in 2020 was the worst team that they played out of those four. Uh, I don't know. Because, I mean, Brady. that defense was good, but, like, I feel like the Bucks were not supposed to beat the Packers in the conference championship. Like, the well, Eagles were supposed to be in the Super Bowl, the yeah. Niners the first time, and the Niners this year. Well, the Eagles also – um, not the Eagles, the Bucks. they were a wild card team. They did not win their division that year they won the Super Bowl. No way. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. that Who won? That was the Saints, the Saints won that year. And then – Oh, that was the Drew Brees, right, where he lost to – um. Who did he lose to in the, the second round? Um, he goes Brady. Brady beat him. Brady, yeah, Brady beat them. Um, Brady beat yeah. Washington in the first round, I'm pretty sure. And then and he beat then, the Saints because oh, yeah. there was that video of Brady and Brady was throwing the ball to Drew Brees' son like on the field after the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did, and yeah, then who did the, the Packers beat? I think... Did they beat the Cowboys? Uh, um, They beat... Yeah, it was the Cowboys, right? I will find or out. Did, the, or yeah, no, did got, the... Commanders won no, the division. Commanders won the division, so I don't think it was the Cowboys. Ew. <laughs> I forgot the NFC East was so bad actually, that year because that got um, hurt. The, the Washington football team won the division. It wasn't the Commanders at the time. True, 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 true. <laughs> 2020 NFL playoffs. All right, let's see. It was... Okay. Tampa beat Washington. New Orleans beat Chicago. The Rams Ew, beat Maggie. Seattle. Maggie. And then the Green Bay beat the Rams. Okay. And then yeah. Tampa beat New Orleans. And then Tampa beat Green Bay. I don't even remember that Green Bay Rams game. That was still golf, obviously. But yeah, that was the that was golf's last that was golf's last game because then they traded for Stafford yeah. and Super Bowl the next year. But so the, going um, going back to the original point, uh, if the Bucks were the worst team, I think they probably were. I guess if you're just looking based on stats, but you're also then saying that Tom Brady's team was the worst, which he just proved every year wasn't true. Which is now what Mahomes is starting to prove because we doubted them the entire season essentially because they struggled and here they are again winning as if nothing happened yeah, yeah. Um, Adam, i'm looking I, I just pulled up the bracket from like the 2020 fl playoffs i get i'm looking at that 48 37 cleveland pittsburgh game we don't talk about that we don't talk Baker, about that that was what 24 nothing at the end of the first half or first like i, I think so it sounds about it right. was dude it was i think it was 14 nothing at the end of the first quarter maybe 21 it was so bad brown steelers let me i i i think it was i think it was it might have been 28 nothing yeah I was. Bad. I, I gotta see this box know. score. So it was, uh, it was the Steelers' last chance of doing anything. Like it was twenty. It was twenty-eight nothing at the end of the first quarter, and then it was thirty-five <laughs> ten at the end of the second quarter, and then third quarter Steelers scored thirteen. So it was thirty-five twenty-three, and they were kind of in it. And then damn, they low key. Yeah, I forgot that they gave me. They kind of teased me in a little bit. Yeah, because because they scored thirteen in the third quarter unanswered, and that was because it was a, it was a a safety or a fumble recovery in the end zone or something like that. Right, that was the first. That was the first play. Yeah, Tomlin just doesn't show up to start off playoff games, ever. Um, so now that the Chiefs 
have just won again and decided not to add a weapon like everyone's been talking about for the past year and a half now it seems like do we think they just roll into next year with the exact same or essentially the exact same skill level at their skills position or do we or do we think they go out and get like some insane upgrade because i mean rice came into his own Nicole hardman when he's in a chief's uniform is insane when he's not he's awful so i guess they just have to keep him in the red and then like mvs is mvs he's fine know, like, he's a fine wide receiver for yeah, like, are they are they really going to upgrade like everyone wants, or are they just going to say, hey, we've done it two years in a row now, why why change it? Yeah, I doubt it. I, yeah. I doubt they're getting a Higgins or, or a Ridley. I, yeah, I, they I might draft like a Tyler, a Tyler Boyder, yeah, in the draft. I doubt they... She I think like, Yeah, Rice could be their number one, like a low-end one overall compared to the rest of the league, but he could be and their you one. And you, yeah, you still have Kelsey, who, even if he takes another step back, is still a top-10 tight end. Ooh. Top three um, still, top five. And then before we finish... Hold on, I gotta pull it up. Who do we well, I know, think? Oh, I was gonna say Chris Jones is a free agent too, so he's probably he gone. I was. He's, su- ah, he's getting so know. much money. Yeah, I don't so think, much money. I don't think he'll come back. So before we finish, um, who do we think the Kansas City Chiefs will host to open the Super Bowl? Uh, open the season uh, next year. I'm trying to pull up their opponents list really quick. So their home games, obviously, they're three division games, which. I don't. I mean, don't forget they opened against the Lions this past year, so anything's possible. But their home games for next season are obviously the three division games: Baltimore, Cincinnati, New Orleans, Tampa, and Houston. I think Houston. They, it was Chiefs Texans like two years ago, though, wasn't it? Wait, three years ago? Was it? Did they open against the Texans after that? Yeah, first Super Bowl? when Watson was still on the Texans. Yeah. So it's, it's probably not gonna be that again. It has to be the Ravens and the Bengals, right? Joe Burrow going to going to Burrowhead week one. That'd be that'd be Thurs, sick. Thursday night football leading into the Eagles on Friday night. It's it, it's gonna be the Ravens and the Bengals because that that that's that's an elite first uh, first kickoff game. Yeah. Or then yeah or yeah that or the Ravens because you could do the rematch of the AFC Championship. I feel like, you know one of those two is probably marked up. Unless do they play any like really good NFC NFC teams like if they actually wanted just to the, do the just the Saints and the Bucks. So I don't. Ew, their schedule is terrible ew. next year. Wait, what? That's it? Who else do they play? Well, do you that's, mean? Their only, that's their only home games. That's all oh, they games. don't know who, like, who's, like, the random NFC team they got? Or it's did, a, they, not, it's did a, they not get one? It's a road game at the oh. 49ers. Oh. And, 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 they, play, and they play the that's Bills sick. on the road, too. That's sick. And, uh, Tom, you forgot they also go to the Steelers. You can't leave out those big boys. <laughs> the Chiefs go to the Steelers? Wait, yeah. Yeah. Where? Yeah, damn it. I, it says right here, I'm looking at it, it says at Pittsburgh Steelers. Wait, why? Did the Steelers play the NFC West? Or no. does the AFC North play the NFC yes. West next year? Yes, that's why we yeah, have the Ravens season? and the Bengals. I'm looking at it right now. They play the NFC. I'm looking at it right now. They play Wait, the what? AFC North next year. Oh, I'm Where are the Steelers? Are they just not on this? No, Steelers play the NFC East, and I guess it's the, the AFC West. The, yeah, because they play the Ravens, the Bengals, uh, the Steelers, and the... Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah, they definitely very, play the It's AFC very West. weird. I'm on I'm on the website I'm on just has 16 games. Just on the Steelers for some reason. That's really weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, cuz the AFC North played the AFC South this year and they played the AFC East last year, so that does make sense. Well, the schedule is tough. They have because they're they're three division opponents. Like they're three random um the three the, the three random first place finishers. First place yeah. matchups. Bills on the road, Texans at home, Niners on the road. Brutal. And then they gotta play the they gotta play the the, the twenty twenty three uh, NFC NFC South champions of Matt's uh, opinion the Panthers who it'd be a really tough game they get they have to go to Charlotte that that's a tough matchup that's tough devoted I think, fans there I think for my official prediction if the Ravens if Lamar did not win MVP and the Ravens did not go to the AFC Championship game I would have said the Bengals but I think them having a rematch of Chiefs Ravens to open the seasons probably what they're gonna go with wouldn't be surprised if they do. Burrow in his first game back, but I'm gonna lock in Ravens Chiefs for my prediction. I feel like the Burrow, like uh, Burrow Mahomes, is a, more of a Sunday Night Football matchup. Like that could very much be like a Week Four, Week Five Sunday Night Football, like early statement well, game. It is Sunday Night Football on Thursday night. No, so, no, carry Underwood doesn't count. No carry. <laughs> um, based off these te- or these two teams, like, or I guess we could start for the Chiefs. If obviously odds would be different, but like Chiefs are the field next year to win the Super Bowl. Like right now, who do you take? Have to take a Chiefs. Obviously, it's you easy can't to not, see. You can't not take a Chiefs because no other team in the NFL, I mean, the Niners, they just beat the Niners, though, so fine. But you can't take the Niners because they just beat them. Like, Shanahan can't beat 
Andy Reid. New team next year, new team. I thought you were. I thought you were going to say guess. you can't not take the field just because was, the field is thirty-one teams. I was going to take the field. I mean, this is the. They're the first back-to-back champs in twenty years. The odds of them three peating are just low. I mean, I, it's stupid to pick against Mahomes, but right now, if you're telling me Chiefs or the field, obviously the odds are much better for the Chiefs. But I'd probably you got to lean the field. Yeah, but yeah. like, like if you, I'm, so I'm looking at it from like an, a regular like betting standpoint. Like, what is the field's odds gonna be like? No, no, I, I, no. I under, I understand that part. But if I'm simply just trying to win and not, oh, factor I'm, th- I'm odds, taking the field. Yeah. All right, Chiefs, Niners, or the field. Like, but so either one of them wins. Do you still go the field? I don't think, I don't think the Ravens, Bills, Lions, or Cowboys are. I would rather take those two teams than the remaining four teams. That's fair. Yeah. I, it's gonna be interesting but because like, yeah, the, 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 the best the chance Chiefs. that it winds up, it could be a rematch. Like, of, of, like that's probably they're the two highest odds teams with the Super Bowl. So, like Vegas is saying, it could be a rematch. Then you would automatically take those two fields, those yeah. two yeah, teams but, over the field. We're, it's still so far out. I mean, the Eagles, the Eagles are supposed to be right back in it this year. They didn't even win a playoff game. So, like anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, as long as they like, I know Majerius needs a free agent, but like, I mean, Trent McDuffie's really good. He was an All Pro this year too, he's I believe. An All-Pro, yeah. And he's got like he's back on our cheap deal. Um, they are going to be able to bring back. Uh, I mean, like Drew Tranquil, like well, like I don't know. They don't have like too many free agents. Obviously, the big one's going to be Chris Jones. Um, I mean, they we'll they line. have a modern day dynasty. Three yeah, and they're five officially years. A dynasty. Yeah, hundred percent. Four four Super Bowls in five years. Eight. Eight straight division titles, which is just also insane. So like they're they're not going anywhere, and it's it's just the world we live in right now. Yeah, I guess for football, they're very, I guess the first dynasty since the Pats when the Pats beat the Rams. Um, I guess that kind of made them a dynasty. Um, but I guess in other sports, they're probably like also the first dynasty. Maybe the just the twenty ten Warriors were technically a dynasty, the and Warriors then there has definitely yeah the well, Astro. No, no, like twenty ten. So like they won oh, in twenty ten uh, a decade. Okay. Yeah, they won Not in fifteen. Two. They won in Astros seventeen. And they won two. in eighteen. Astros yeah. only have two, so it's tough. Uh, and it, and they go, were very spaced out too. Twenty seventeen to twenty twenty two. If you go with, hockey, if you go with hockey, I was gonna say the Blackhawks because they won three, right? Okay, the with Penguins three. won two, I think. In, like, they won right back to back. Blackhawks. Yeah. They won. The yeah. Penguins won back to back twice, but the Blackhawks won three within five years. I'm pretty sure. Like they did have. What a was the What was the 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 in, the space in between those four Stanley Cups? The Penguins. Like ten years, they won two. Oh, then it went like ten years, and they won two. It was about oh, no. ten. Yeah, um, I feel like it's got to be three in like five years or something. Or yeah, I, th- or I think and three in five years is is kind of. I feel like that's kind of like the standard. Yeah, or you just do the Patriots thing and you win six within like fifteen years, and you go to two more in between. That's, that, like, that's, that's, that's dynasty. Never many dynasties. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> well, the Patriots um, only won three. They lost the Stanley Cup final. They won oh eight oh nine, and then. 16, 2015, 16, and 16, 17, they won. So, like, three in, like, eight years. Yeah. Um. All right, yeah, so that was pretty much our Super Bowl reaction. Tom got the dub. He predicted the Chiefs. Uh, me, Dom, and Dom's dog. Dom, your dog definitely took the Niners. He went in there. Did you, you saw the video. He took, I saw the video. He he nibbled on the Niners, man. He nibbled and then feasted on the Chiefs. He, If anything, he nailed it perfectly. He said Niners first half, Chiefs game. Nah, I, that's spin zone I, for your narrative. That spin zone. I, if, if the Niners won, you'd be like, bet, nah, he initially went the Niners. I bet money on the 49ers, saw my dog pick the Chiefs, posted the video so everybody else saw he picked the Chiefs, and then the Chiefs won. So th- it was Chiefs no matter what. I mean... I'll put the video in now. I'll let the I'll let the viewers decide. <laughs> they can vote on what they think, but I counted it as Chiefs. Everybody else counted as it counted it as Chiefs and he's now eight and two in his ten Super Bowl predictions, so he just Those wins. Are- it's a good record. It's a good record. So that'll wrap it up for us. Um, we'll probably just kind of roll into the mock off seasons after this going forward until the 2024 NFL season. So we hope you guys did enjoy the reactions and reviews uh, or in the predictions kind of this year as well. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.